Go on as well from this plane iron. Fuck. Just to work a bit more quicker, I'm using this coarse 220 grit diamond pad. It's not perfectly straight, but I'm just using it on the non critical ends. Damnations. It says made in London English birch and then at the top I can't quite get C Nurse and Co Limited 1A something something 163 Wharf Road London S E South East and then there's a sort of logo there. Not to know if that's a lion or a horse. And then there's some sort of banner. do is router out the shape of the top of the plane iron so that there's a little bit of timber here that sits in this opening and then I'm going to glue the top on and when this moves across it should be equal on either side and then I'll just tidy up around the edge and then maybe taper it around a little bit here so I'm just going to do the laborious part of uh, laying this out uh, as vector lines so I've just created the vector files for the part of the plane iron I'm going to write around on the timber. Um, another way I could have done this was to actually photograph this or scan the object in and import that as a canvas and then change the scale of the image so it was relative to the actual object and then to trace over that. I think this should work fine for what I'm going to do. If I need to do any adjustments I can just do it by hand. Amazing. 
So the shape isn't perfect because obviously I drew a perfect circle and this isn't uh, a perfect circle. <laughs> but it feels really flat. The only thing that's a bit raised is the edge here on the end of the plane iron, which has been hammered so much over time that. Oh fuck, that's really tight now. <laughs> I don't know what happens when you mix a uh, slow and fast setting arrow light together, but... Okay, I'm going to leave this to dry and cure, and then uh, see what we can do with it afterwards. Taking it all apart, I think I'm going to mix up a bit more arrow dart and just get it into this side here, any of the little areas that it hasn't kind of squeezed out of, and then I'll leave it properly for 24 hours to harden. I considered working the handle by hand with a spoke shave, but I also like to mill it using the CNC machine, so I decided to model a rough shape of half the handle in Fusion 360 which I exported as an STL file, the same file format I work with while 3D printing. I then made a new cradle for the entire handle of the chisel and popped the block in. There's a way to mill 3D shapes by importing the 3D model under the relief drop down menu of my software, a now defunct and unsupported CAM software, which is no longer available. I'm not going to go over the detail of how I've done this, not on this channel anyway, but if I have time, I'll make a dedicated video on the second channel. But the gist of it is, I had to create a machine relief toolpath and selected a tool for both the roughing and finishing passes. There's a few different options for the finishing path, but I'll be using the same tool bit in both instances. I think what I'm going to do is put a screw in right at the end because the handle is quite long I can, I can cut that off afterwards and that will just help keep it in position the front's pretty good I only realised after I'd completed milling the handle that the finishing was different on either side. What I'd done was select a different type of finishing toolpath and saved it over without realising I was still cutting the first one. The finer finish was the classic raster, while the coarser one was the standard raster. Probably was a bit stupid working on the chisel without covering the sharp edge of the blade, but I made it. I mean I made it without hurting myself. It looks a bit Klingon, but I'm happy with how it turned out, because I didn't have to turn it. 
I mean I only turned it once by finally machining something with a 3D toolpath on my CNC machine. A new door has opened. If you liked the video please write the word foot in the comment section and if you didn't write the word hand. If you are ambivalent write the word elbow. Foot again for watching.